to another try this. I'm Shannon and I'm Leslie and today we're at the Ingersoll Creative Arts Center and we're gonna try some pottery. Let's go inside and look around. So here we are inside the beautiful building the Creative Arts Center in Ingersoll and we're here with Stephanie. Stephanie what is it that you do here? All right, so my name is Stephanie and I am the art administrator here at the Ingersoll Creative Arts Center. And so my role really is just to make sure that the art center runs smoothly. So I'm here kind of Monday to Friday and I welcome people into the art center. I do sales in the gift shop. I also help come up with classes, register people for classes, any of the youth programming that started this year at the center. So the camps and the PD days, that's something um, that I'm in charge of, as well as the new art kits that are starting to roll out too. Ooh, art kits, mm -hmm. that sounds yeah. like fun. So we're going to take a little quick tour around before we dive into some pottery, but Stephanie, what room are we in right now? So this is our exhibition gallery. About eight times a year we have exhibitions and that we're actually booking into 2023 for exhibits, which wow. is really, really awesome. Right now we're featuring Pat Gibson, who is one of our local artists. She's also a member. So a lot of um, her work, especially what you're seeing here, is oil on mylar. And she uses like an, an oil chalk and um, just it's very abstract, lots of bright colors. She's a very bright bubbly person and so you see that in her art. And we're open, the gallery is open um, Monday to Friday from 9 until 3 and then Saturdays 1 till 4. And anybody can come in? Anybody can come in. So we just ask that you sign in at the table and then you can sign the guest book that's here for the artist and you can come on in and have a look. Well, let's have a tour. Perfect. All right, come on. So this room is our artisan market. So a lot of people don't actually know that the Ingersoll Creative Art Center has a artisan market. Um, so it's our gift shop and what's in here is all handmade items from our members. So all local artists, it's anybody who's a member here can come in and sell what they've created and it's kind of a one of a kind gift for anybody who's you know special on your shopping list this is definitely a place to check out if you've got somebody who's creative and an artist in your life is this center here it's pretty cool awesome there is some really unique neat items in here and so you'll see we've got knitted items we've got jewelry we've got photography there's pottery quilting um, there's little stuffed animals there's all kinds of stuff so there's really an item in here for any age so again, anyone can come in and purchase something? Anybody can come in and purchase and support local. Awesome. So you'd be supporting a not-for-profit organization as well as local artists. Awesome. And yeah. debit? Debit, credit, um, cash, anything along those lines, we would accept. It's awesome. very eye-catching. It's right inside the door as soon as you come inside and there's lots to look at. So definitely recommend popping over to the Creative Arts Center and having a look. So this corner of the building is our Celebrating Members Corner, so every month it features the work of one of our very talented members. But this month we have the work of Linda Ridley, and she does all of her work with thread painting. So anything along these walls that kind of look like it's been hand painted, it's actually done with different types of thread and fiber arts. So there's a little bit of felting involved. Um, she's also one of our quilters, and she also does Zen Tangles. Especially in this owl, she's done the thread painting, but she's also used techniques that she's learned during her Zen Tangle drawings. Every month, there's somebody new that's featured in this corner. All of our youth programming happens kind of in this space, so any of our afternoon classes that we have for youth. So right now we have Paint Like an Artist, which is an art history class, and then we have Crafts with Chloe. Chloe is also our PD Day camp and summer camp personnel who is much loved by the youth and then uh, if any of our studio time um, goes over the allotted COVID numbers we have overflow that comes into this space as well. So the room behind us is our fiber artist studio so in here we have quilting, we have our fiber artists, we have our rug hookers, felting is done in here so anything that requires some kind of fabric or string or anything along those lines is done in this studio. We also use this space as our painter's studio. So everybody gets um, studio time. So once a week, it, the, there's a designated studio time for each artist group. Everybody has their own individualized workstations with COVID. They're all six feet apart. It's nice and safe. But, but yeah, it's, it's a great space. We also bring our youth camp in here when it's 
If it's a rainy day, we can watch movies in here. And then behind me here is our Potter's Seconds. This little display is all items that the potters have made, but they feel like have maybe like a little flaw in it, or they don't like the way that the glaze went, or how how it uh, came out in the kiln. So it's just like little tiny details that you and I probably wouldn't even notice, but the potters do, and they don't feel like they can sell it in the gift shop. So they have it here as a really reduced price. These these items go really, really quick. So this room here is our pottery studio, and this is Sydney. She is one of our long-term members. You've been here for a very, for, very, for long, a very long time. Yeah. And uh, she also teaches a lot of our beginner wheel classes and intermediate classes. So Sydney will be the one that will be showing you the introductory wheel um, for making bowls. Okay, so I'm going to leave you in her very capable hands and she's going to give you a little tour of the center. Awesome, thank, thank you. you. Okay, so this is, this is our work studio. This is where we put stuff waiting to be finished. Okay, these are all our glazes. You can buy commercial glazes like this, which they're very pricey. Or we, we make our own because it's a lot cheaper, but it's labor intensive and it's all done by volunteers. These are our wheels, which is where we have all our classes. These are the things that you would use on the wheel. Trimming tools, uh, throwing, throwing tools. When we have something that we've made and it's never been fired like this, okay, so it's dry, we call it leather hard. We put it in the kiln room, and this is the kiln room. And this kiln is empty. And this kiln is at 400 degrees right now, but it fires to 2300, okay? Wow. So we put it in for one firing is this. And once this is fired, it comes out looking like this, hard, white, um, just like this. This is this will break very easily. It hasn't been fired at all. This is after one firing. After you fire it, then you glaze this, okay? And then you put it on this shelf, and then it gets fired again to a to, to a higher temperature. So now this is glazed. It will go in there. Someone comes along, takes it out of there, and puts the finished pieces here. And then we come along and collect them. So then there's the finished pieces. Alright, so we turn the wheel on, we take a pound of clay, and we, we smack it down. And then, this is called coning up. So what you want to do is make sure that the clay is all going up the same way and it's nice and centered. So this is not centered. So I'm going to center it now. So I'm pushing the clay in and pulling up at the same time, just like this. Okay. Okay. And that's fine. Now I'm going to push it down. And the clay folding in on itself is what helps it to center. So you can see now I'm not perfectly centered. It's a little bit off. A little bit. Mm -hmm. So I'll pull it up again. And I'll push it down again. And that, that is more centered. Like I can feel that. I don't know on your video if you could see it, but a lot of pottery is feel. Okay? All right. So I'm going to go in, find the center, and then I'm going to pull it towards me. Wow. So. There's that. You always want to have your hands wet. And we compress the bottom with my fingers so you don't get a crack in it. And then all this fat clay here is going to come up. So we 
tuck our, our elbows in and we push it up. So I'll push it up again. We want it thinner. Alright. Then I'll pull it out towards me, make it a bit of a bowl. Wow, yeah. <laughs> so that, Make it look so easy. I know. That's why we have seven-week classes. This is going to get too thin. And then this is where we recycle a lot of clay. Because when you're learning, you just keep pulling, and then it gets too wet. Oh, okay. And that happens, right? And then we, don't, we want to use this clay again, but yeah. it's got so much air in it, you could never center it. Okay. So what we do is we throw it in that bucket. And, uh, and we will reuse it, okay? And then we can use anything to clean it up. I like, I like the whole CD thing. It's nice recycling those two. Yep, <laughs> I'll recycle all that. Yeah, yeah, we recycle everything here. Okay, so do you want to give it a try? Okay. Okay, you've each got a piece of clay. We'll do it together. You're going to take your clay and smack it down hard and hard. Okay, so then spin your wheel around. There's a foot pedal here on your bottom. So spin it around and see if it's stuck on. Like hit it and see if it's really stuck on. Because if it, if you get going fast on the wheel and it flies off, you won't be happy. I'm stuck but it's not in the center. No, mine either. I'll, I'll make sure mine's really off center. Okay, so there's mine. Okay, so you wet your hands. Your hands are wet. Yes. Elbows in. Okay. Put your hands like this around the clay. Okay. And push in without moving your hand. That's it. And if you feel like you need more water, but push push harder because it's got to be a cone. Sydney makes it look very easy. No, this but is, you're doing it. This is so interesting. Okay. So you make sure your hands are wet, otherwise it will stick to the clay and pull it off. Okay? There, you guys are good. Okay, now another tricky part is you're going to push it down. Okay? So, there it is like that. Now, you're going to take, you both got enough to, to uh, do it. Okay, hey, you guys are good. <laughs> okay, you guys are good. Okay, this, Beginner's block. this be. part of your hand okay. is what we're going to push it down with. And that, the, the left hand is just going to hold it because it's going to make a big mushroom and we don't want a mushroom. Okay. Okay, so I'll show you and then we can. If I do this and I don't use my hand right, I'll get that, oh. right? And then that will fold over and create air in there and it won't center. So what I do is I take this hand and I push it in. Okay, so this hand is pushing in and this hand is pushing down. Okay. Until we've got what looks like a hockey. Then we, we just take your finger, we go into the middle, and we're going to push down. But don't push all the way down because you won't have a bottom on your top. What you do is stick the pin tool into the bottom and see as long as you've got you know, some space there. Okay, so you can feel you've still got a bottom and you see it's about that thick. Yeah. You're good. So now. Now we're going to wet our finger again, pull towards you. And this is where it's important probably to have your elbows anchored because you don't want to be, you want to be nice and smooth and slow. When you take classes, you practice, 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 doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> fine. They look the same, that's good. <laughs> now we're going to bring it up. Okay, so then I take some fingers on this side and fingers on this side and I start squeezing them together. Yeah, that, that's great. I mean, that's fine. It's just that it's beautiful. Well, 
You guys got the hang of it pretty fast. Play is so playable. You can play with it forever. It's very it's mesmerizing too to really watch it. Yeah, yeah very can, therapeutic. You know, make it bigger and like I can play. Yeah, you can play with it forever. Okay, that's throwing the bowl. That's amazing. Then we take the clay off because we're gonna save it. I just draw lines on this so I can get some idea of what center is and place my pot as close as I can so it looks centered. Okay, I'm gonna and then I'm gonna stick it on like this. So a little bit of water tiny bit of water and just some old clay. Stick it on like that so that it will stick while it's going around. Okay. Then I take this and I draw a circle here and a circle here so I know that I want to take all this off and I want to take that off. Okay. All right. So, tuck my arms in. And I start. Now I ch did check at the beginning to see how thick this was because that's you know you, you don't want to trim through. then that would be a trimmed foot. So that's trimming. Awesome. You want to give it a try? Okay. All right, let's go. So these are just air dry? Yeah. Okay. Like a, I mean, yeah. For a couple days? Yeah. Okay. Now just take your pencil and draw three or four lines on the uh, Okay, so there's one and a bigger one and a smaller one because you have a small bowl. Like inside one? Yep. Okay. So try and get that you know, centered. Okay. So this is called a gif and grip. So this one centers, centers it for me. Okay. Oh, cool. That was cool. So sure. quick. <laughs> yeah, they're expensive, but boy, I sure like them. Okay. okay. So you got your paint tool? Yeah. Draw a little line close to the edge. So you're going to take some off here. Yep. Perfect. All right. It's an interesting looking circle. And then, just so you don't forget, take your pin tool and put an X in the circle, and then all this stuff on the outside has to come off. Okay. So we use our, our tool. Yep. Does it matter what side or? Uh, no, no. I use this just if it's more circular, but this to trim. Okay. I use the flat side to trim. And tuck your elbows in again, so your hands are nice and steady. Make the wheel go around. And there you go. Yeah. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, you got to make sure it's maybe uh, wetted a bit if you want. It's got to be stuck right on. Good. The bits are fast work. <laughs> okay, now the middle part. So I take the round part okay. now for the middle. And my arms are tucked in and I start in the middle by just pushing down a little bit. Center part is far <laughs> more difficult. <laughs> the inside part is far more yes, yeah. it is. Yes, it is. I totally hear you. The tool 
grabs the clay. And I don't mind that, okay? Because that's called chattering. And so when you do chattering like that, you can hear it makes a funny noise, not smooth at all. That's an imperfection, but, but a lot of people love it because you get this really cool design. Yeah. And when you glaze that design, all the glaze will break away from the design. And so, so I'm kind of a fan of the design, but you can, um, you can easily straighten it out with another tool if you didn't like it, but that's called chattering. Yeah, okay, just wiping off the dust. We don't want it to be real wet. The e glazing is pretty easy. It takes like seconds. Then you have to decide what color you want. So we we have all these test tiles here. Floating blue, which is really a standard good one. So this is um, OPA green. This is what it will look like. All right, so there's all your colors. The blue is lovely. An OCL okay, blue, yes. Blue, okay? So we find it down here, blue floating. I'm, I'm gonna go with this. Gloss floating blue, right here. Now, just to show you, these these are the funniest things, but there, it doesn't look very blue. Oh my gosh. I know, <laughs> that's the way it is. All of the colors, they don't line up like, like you think, mm -hmm. okay? Like black is red. When I open a bucket, it's pure red, but it's black. <laughs> it says on it's black. Okay, you stir it really well so that you know you don't have any lumps or bumps or anything in it because if it's got any lumps in it, it has to be soaked. But this looks pretty good, okay? You can't let the bottom of your pot touch the kiln shelf because your glaze turns to glass. And if glass melts onto the kiln shelf, then you can't, you can't get it off. So you can't let a bottom of a pot, can't let the glaze touch it. So this is wax. If you get any wax on this part of it, then the glaze, it's wax resist, so the the glaze will resist um, and won't it won't stick. So that's the most important thing is when you're glaze when you're putting wax on it, just make sure you get it on the bottom and nowhere else. Okay. So we'll do that, and then a little tiny bit up the sides here is good because. If the glaze runs, it won't run onto the kiln shelf. It'll stop where the wax is. Two, three in, one, two, three out. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> so far, I, like there comes where the wax is, right? So that's good. We want that. All right, and then I just very gently lay it down here to dry. And then these marks that are in there, when that glaze is dry, and it will dry in about two minutes. We just um, take our finger and smooth it, okay. and the glaze will will meld into it. Okay, so that's it. You guys all want floating blue? Here's your tongs. That that's the easiest part. All right. Okay. One, two, three in. Okay, go right in, right, totally in. We dunk it. One, two, three out. That's it. And shake it off a bit. And then you put it over here. That's it. Cool. Yeah. Ready? Right one, one, two, three. <laughs> 
have really good hand grip strength for this. I'm just going to put another color on the rim and let it drip down. Okay. So when you come back, you guys will see it and we'll see what it looks like. Because you never know. <laughs> sometimes opening the kiln is heaven and sometimes it's not. We'll see what this does. Okay, that's it. So the glaze, you can see the wax does a good job, but it's not perfect. So we just take a sponge and we wipe it off. And then for giving us the crash course try this version of how you to guys are very good for first timers i gotta say yeah okay. this is so interesting i'm looking forward to seeing uh, what it looks like when it's all finished and we will definitely show everybody how it turned out okay that's great thanks so thank much thank you okay. this has been such an interesting experience at the creative arts center here in ingersoll and we've learned so much the pottery demonstration and just trying to do it it she made it look really easy and it was Challenging, but so, so interesting. I would definitely like to try a beginner class. Absolutely. I am wearing some of the pottery, but otherwise, that was a lot of fun. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yes, yes. So, what do you have upcoming? Okay. So, right now, um, we have our Fuse Glass class that we're registering for, and that will happen on December the 15th. And so, an example of some of the Fuse Glass work is here, and her name is Jane Wright. But she is a local artist, so um, she has been amazing, and she's willing to teach some of um, our community how to do Fuse Glass. So, you can make a 6x6 six six inch plate, which is just a little bit smaller than the plate that's located down here, if you can see it. And, or a six inch Christmas tree. Nice. And um, so you'll come in, she'll show you how to cut all the glass, how to place all the glass, how to make different designs, and then she'll take it back to her studio where she has a glass kiln, which is different than the pottery kilns that you saw today. And then she will run it through her kiln and bring it back. And then the, the final product can be picked up a couple days later. Very cool. Yeah, very cool. Um, other classes that we offer are, we've got water painting classes, we've got tons of quilting classes. We just received some funding so we can purchase some sewing machines so that we can offer youth sewing classes, which is really great. Fun. We're very, very excited about that. Uh, we also are looking at some of our um, felting classes to come um, in the new year. So there'll be like a woolly tree felting class that happens in February. We also are looking into some soap making classes for youth, um, more pottery classes, which is, they're always full. So we highly recommend you get on our wait list because they don't often make it out to the public. We usually go through our wait list first and then all of our youth and art classes. So Crafts with Chloe will hopefully return in the winter sessions and some other really fun um, youth classes. Uh, I believe quilling is in the work, so oh, okay. that is working with paper. Mm -hmm. It's really, really neat. We also have these really cool youth art kits. And so this is our winter kit. So it'll come in this really cute Rudolph bag. There's four different, or four different crafts that you can make with it. Uh, four different crafts, but seven kind of crafts in total, and the cost for the bag is 25 bucks. So for youth, we do offer summer camps, March break oh, right. camps, yeah. winter camps, and PD day camps. So they're full day programs. They're really great programs. They are art based. So for summer camp, every week they learned a different um, medium of art. We typically do fill up, so we do recommend that you register when you see those come out on social media. Um, but they're, they're really, really great. And they're for kids from grade one to up to grade six, grade seven, and then becoming a member. Yes. So yes. if you are interested in becoming a member, our membership fee for the year, so our year is September to September, so it's $150, and then you'll kind of see a reduced rate that starts around February. So right now, if you were to become a member, it is $150, um, and then you would be allowed to come in and use the studio times based on the, uh, the 
art that I guess you want to create. So you would come in during your allotted studio time hours. And then after hours, we have a key fob system. So um, once we train you on how to use the alarm system and everything like that, and you've been a member with us for a little bit, you're comfortable with the building, then you can come in after hours to, to work on whatever fun art projects that you have. Membership also gives you a reduced um, class price. So we have a community, a non-member community, class price and then a member class price so you'll see a reduction in a lot of the class rates that way too and then you get the ability to sell in our gift shop as well as our events and deck the halls events that we have that happen throughout the year as well. So before we leave you, um, where do we find information about the Creative Arts Centre online or how do we find out about more about it? Yeah, so we uh, have a new website which is launching hopefully in the next little bit and maybe it'll be up by the time this video <laughs> comes out that we're really excited about, but it's um, www.creativeartscenter.com and or you just type in the good old Google Ingersoll Creative Arts Center and we should pop up and that'll be where you can find all of our updated information on our website. We also strongly recommend that you follow us on Facebook, that's where all of our posts go um, and that way it'll give you notifications so that if we happen to have a pottery class that comes up you'll be first, the first to know because you you follow us on Facebook uh, we do have Instagram as well even just by coming to pop in pop in give us a call uh, visit us anytime Monday through Friday and I'll be here to help you if you need anything or have any questions and for those that maybe don't know exactly where the Art Creative Arts Center is located. Oh yes, so we can be a little bit tricky to find because we're right in the heart of Victoria Park. Pull into the, the big blue park um, and you follow kind of that driveway. We're located right, right in the heart of Victoria Park. So it's 125 Centennial Lane, but as long as you know where the park is, you'll find us. Right by the splash pad. Right by the splash pad. If you're driving through the Christmas lights, we're right beside that beautiful um, light um, tunnel that they have. That's our building. All right. Well, thank you so much for having us, Stephanie, allowing us to see the building and giving us a tour and for letting us to try some pottery. We enjoy being in Sydney. She's awesome. So we look forward to see what else you guys have coming up. Well, that was so interesting. I've never tried pottery before, and we got to see a lot of other types of creative art. Of course, we couldn't leave the gift shop without buying a little something to bring home with us. And don't forget, you can place holds on any of the books that you'd seen throughout this series at www.ocl.net, and you can just search pottery books and see what we have. And of course, follow Oxford County Library on social media. You can find us on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, and Instagram. And you can find other Try This videos and a ton more programming videos on our YouTube channel. Thanks for joining us today, and until next time, bye!